This very first copycat recipe, I think originally it was leaked by a Taco Bell employee when they quit the job, when they no longer work there. But it's kind of been going around now, so you know, there's multiple sources, but one thing I know for sure, if this copycat recipe is real, at least for me, this is definitely gonna make me look at Taco Bell differently because this is so easy, actually easier than driving to Taco Bell. This is a copycat recipe for the Taco Bell cinnamon twists. Allegedly, according to our sources, the Taco Bell recipe for the cinnamon twists is basically this. One ingredient. This is a wheat flour snack pellet, which I think in Mexico they call this duros de harina. I don't really know, like don't quote me on that. These are wheat dry snacks that when you fry them, they puff up and they basically become what Taco Bell sells. The only thing they do to it is literally sprinkle some cinnamon and brown sugar and you've got endless cinnamon twists for the rest of your life. Mind blowing. So first things first, we're going to open our duros and the annoying thing is there's basically three different shapes for duros I think traditionally in Mexico. One of them are these wheels. They actually look really interesting. I've never seen that before. These actually are my favorite shape out of all three. The second shape, it's basically a rectangle. This is like the plainest shape of all of them. I think the ingredients are literally exactly the same. And the third one are these twists that I'm gonna put a photo on here, which is exactly what Taco Bell uses. I might make both of them because I think they cook at the same time. These bags seem small, but I think this cooks really like it puffs up quite a lot First thing we're gonna do is prepare the deep fryer, which by the way I have a deep fryer people have been requesting for me to buy a deep fryer for so long and I finally did it All it took was Amazon sales to convince me. Is there a mark for the oil? I don't know so, I am using some vegetable oil, but I think there might be a more traditional choice of oil. This was the cheapest. Me when these twists are ready. With these videos, we say allegedly a lot because, you know, these companies can get upset. We are sharing secrets and things that can cause a real reaction. So we always say allegedly a lot. And like I said, I don't know if this is true. So please, Taco Bell, I've given you my money. Okay, so I'm gonna heat up the oil. I'm pretty sure the oil is ready because I can smell it. The only thing I'm gonna do before we throw them in is the cinnamon and brown sugar mixture because as soon as this comes out, while the little snacks are still hot, I wanna apply the mixture just to make sure this sticks to it. Wow. Copycat of my dreams. On the package it says that these can expand from three to seven times of their size, which is a big gap of variation in size. So I'm not just gonna throw in like 50 of them. We're gonna do 10 of them. So I'm gonna do five of these little wheels and then five of the square ones. One, two, three, four, five. Wow, she can count. This is supposed to take only seven seconds. So before I put it in, I just want you to see the size that this is. And we're gonna see if this truly expands to like 10 times this size. This is the size of what we're putting in. This is very, very small. This is gonna be like my stomach before an all you can eat buffet and then after. Also the same amount of oil absorbed. <laughs> this is definitely not scary. Okay, let me put the lid on. This is supposed to take 10 seconds. That's not even enough to lower this. Oh my God. Me trying to delay this. Why does this not fit? Okay. One, two. Oh my God, it's buffing up. That was incredible. Okay, so I think it's ready. That's how long it takes. This is technology at its peak. That literally took like three seconds, not even. Oh, so that's basically it. So now we sprinkle cinnamon and sugar and obviously you can absorb the oil if you're into a healthier lifestyle. I'm actually quite happy with the way it is. I'm gonna be honest, they look a little pale in comparison to the Taco Bell ones, but it could be, you know? These literally look like a sweet pork rinds, except this time around I'm the pig. I'm about to be the pig. This is mind blowing. This is what I'm talking about. You can't go to Taco Bell anymore and see them the same way when you know this takes three seconds to make. This is the most genius fast food dessert ever invented just because it's so easy. Imagine if it actually tastes the same. Should we do an experiment where we just throw a lot of them and see what happens? 
Oh my god, wait, there's no space for all of these. Okay, let's do one more. <laughs> I'm gonna film it so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, we need this to be in 4K because if there's ever been a 4K moment, it's this one. 60 frames per second. I would do more if I could. <laughs> oh, 60 frames per second so we can do a slow-mo. Wait, so... We're doing a little too many, just literally exaggerating this whole thing. Okay, hopefully you guys can see what's going on. The oil, the little, the little duros. So I'm just gonna close it and you'll see how quick this is. Like I really need to make sure I get this on camera. Three, two, one. Oh, it's happening. Beautiful. <laughs> oh my God, this is like the best thing ever. Do you see that? That is literally magic. So I'm getting it out now. You know what, we'll get the lid as well, I guess. Do you see how easy that was? How quickly we made these? It's actually like mind blowing. According to these employees, all they do is literally this step. Sprinkle this with cinnamon and sugar. And obviously you can use the twisty ones, the ones that actually look like the Taco Bell ones. If you wanna impress someone, then you know how to make it. I've never been more ready to eat anything in my entire life. I'm gonna grab this one, loads of sugar and stuff. These are exactly, exactly the same. The crunchiness, exactly the same. The amount of like grease absorbed, literally the same. But in my opinion, this is literally exactly the same. I would not, honestly tell you that I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between these and the cinnamon twists from Taco Bell, other than the shape, which you know, if you want, you can buy the other one. So good. It takes seven seconds. Even if you don't have a Mexican supermarket near you, you can probably get these on eBay for like a dollar, maybe even less. And look how much it makes. We've still got a full bag. If you didn't know about this, I'm pretty sure I've just changed your life. This is a perfect copycat recipe. So what a way to start this video. For this next copycat recipe, we're actually experimenting with a whole new side of copycat recipes. Sometimes when you go to a restaurant and you order a food item, the only way to find out how it's actually made is by looking at the ingredients list and with trial and error, basically try to change the ratios until you get to the exact flavor that you're looking for. In America, there's this very popular drink at Starbucks, which is called the Strawberry Acai Refresher, which by the way is incredible. And up to literally yesterday, Yesterday, it did not exist here in the UK so I really wanted to show all my UK viewers how to make it with a copycat recipe but turns out now you can also get it at Starbucks so this whole thing might be pointless but this is very interesting because we're actually using super weird like ingredients they are not conventional at all like you'd only get this if you're making something at a factory to sell at a restaurant ingredients like freeze-dried strawberries or green coffee bean extract this is fun for me because this is very much like a side science project, like reverse engineering a recipe. This is a whole series on its own, but we're gonna try it with this Starbucks strawberry acai refresher. This is all allegedly, I'm getting this information from copycat blogs. The links will be in the description down below, but we are starting with freeze-dried strawberries. So I think what we're doing is we're starting with the power ingredients and then we're mixing it into like a paste so that it's not lumpy. So this should not be open because I did not open this before. Interesting. It starts with two and a half teaspoons of freeze-dried strawberries, which by the way is not a very cheap ingredient. Suddenly the prices of Starbucks start to make sense. So two and a half teaspoons of freeze-dried strawberries. Sometimes you come across like a recipes blog or even like a food YouTuber recreate a Starbucks drink and then the ingredients are like very organic stuff. Like they would probably use passion fruit tea for this and mix it with coconut milk. And then you try it and you're disappointed. And the reason is because with these professional ingredients, if you will, that's what makes it taste like Starbucks. It's not really realistic that you can recreate that at home on your own, but we're doing it for the fun anyways. The next ingredient is freeze-dried organic acai berry powder and I hope I'm pronouncing acai, acai you know it's one of those words that people are just gonna drag me in the comments so please do it the comment section is open this strawberry acai powder smells almost like fish so we need about one teaspoon of this which is actually not a lot so half a teaspoon and another half so now we need three quarters of a teaspoon of green coffee extract. I've never even... 
That is so weird. That smells like vegetable soup at my primary school. So we need three quarters of this green coffee bean extract. Uh, I think this stuff is really concentrated in caffeine. That's why we need so little of this. This is how Starbucks puts the caffeine in the drinks to get us addicted. So we keep coming back for more. This right here, which by the way, <laughs> has come all the way from China. A long journey for something that probably is not even gonna taste like the real deal. This is passion fruit puree, which is actually very difficult to find. This stuff is not at the supermarket. You can maybe find passion fruit juice. Now puree is like a very specific thing. So wait, let me mix it before we open it. This is one kilogram of it. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with the rest, so don't ask me because I don't know. So we need two teaspoons of this passion fruit puree. Oh, it's basically like juice. That smells better than the actual regular strawberry acai. I literally am so scared of getting sued by Starbucks because it's the end of my YouTube channel if that happens. <laughs> I do not stand a chance. This is about to make my whole day because I bought a tiny whisk the other day and I was just saying that I'm never ever going to have a use for this and now I have a use for this. Please behold my tiny whisk. Now that we got that out of the way. The reason why I think we mix it like that is because this is basically supposed to form a paste so that once you make the actual drinks from this, it's all gonna be very smooth. So we get the lumps basically out of the way. The coffee extract has got a few lumps in it. This has to be such a strong form of caffeine because of the... That does not taste good. At all. <laughs> that tasted like I licked dirt. I was trying to get creative, there was no need. The answer was right beneath my feet. <laughs> I'm making this in this giant bowl because, you know, if you're actually going through the effort of making this with all these weird ingredients, you wouldn't make just one drink, you'd make at least four. So I'm gonna start by adding this. I'm really starting to lose it a little bit because this doesn't seem like it's going to taste anything like the Starbucks one, but we'll see. Not in color, not in texture. So to this, we're supposed to add three cups of water. So, you know, water is the foundation of most Starbucks drinks, surprisingly. I don't know where they get it from. An oasis in some desert, only explanation. And even then, they still make a profit. This is very difficult to like fully remove the lumps. Like you probably need a blender for this actually. I think it's the freeze dried strawberries that really don't wanna blend in, me in high school. All right, you know what? This is as good as it gets. So I'm just gonna add the rest of the water. This is the color of dirt. <laughs> It looks how it tastes. Interesting. It does not smell like a strawberry acai refresher. It also smells like dirt. The next ingredient is two and a half cups of grape juice, which most of us probably didn't expect that grape juice goes in this, but it does. It is actually basically the foundation of it, which is so interesting. So that's about two cups and this is about half a cup. This is basically grape juice that we diluted. Grape juice is weirdly hard to find, specifically white grape juice. So that is it. This is supposed to be the copycat. It's a little lumpy, I'm not gonna lie, but these copycat videos are actually like, they don't look right and then somehow ends up being right. So turns out I don't have a strainer, but because the lumps are actually only sitting on top, I'm gonna use one of these and just try to get the smooth bits from the bottom. I don't know if this is going to work, but this is... Okay, I mean, that kind of does look in a smaller amount, right? That is the right color. That actually looks like the Starbucks one with little dots of strawberry and everything. You'd also pour this over ice, which we don't have. Starbucks in the 1340s. I don't even know what I said. I have no idea what the 1340s are. <laughs> My notion of time is yesterday, today, and tomorrow. <laughs> It feels a little syrupy, which I actually think the strawberry acai from Starbucks feels a little syrupy in texture as well. This is starting to look not too bad. Okay, now you have to imagine that at Starbucks there would be some ice on top of it, but the color, it's looking right. Okay, I think this would be our last one because you'd have to imagine the rest would probably be oxygen. It would be a truly copycat. The very last step that they do at Starbucks is to add some freeze-dried strawberries. That is the signature look for the strawberry SI. Um, I bought a whole bag. This was literally one kilogram Okay, 100 grams of freeze-dried strawberries. I ate them. Like, I literally ate all of them. There's literally one slice left. This is literally powder. 
I guess I was really hungry. Is that a slice? Okay, there's one tiny slice here. So that one goes in. These are no slices, but I'll put them in. That is supposed to be a copycat reverse engineering version of the strawberry acai refresher from Starbucks. How will we know if this is a real deal? I will taste it and I will tell you. Visually, I would say this is like a seven out of 10. You know, it's a little bit darker, but the texture of it, I can't explain, it feels similar. The smell, it smells pretty similar now. Mmm. Wow, it's, um, it's bitter. <laughs> The actual flavor of the liquid is really similar, minus sugar. It needs a little bit more sugar. Maybe the concentrate of the grape juice it should have been more concentrated. But the actual problem is the texture. I needed a strainer for this. I needed to get rid of the chunks because the chunks ruin it. That's a lot better. It just hit a spot. That is really similar. I know it doesn't make any sense, but next time you have a strawberry acai refresher, think about it. It's grape juice. That's basically all it is. Specifically white grape juice. That literally changed everything. I'm very interested in copycat recipes. I feel like in this series, we almost always get lucky every single time that a recipe is leaked by an employee, someone who actually worked there. This time around, because this comes from someone who tried to create the recipe with ingredients, I don't think it's quite there. I wouldn't call this a good copycat recipe. Unfortunately, unless some of you guys have worked at Starbucks before and you can come through with some information, I don't really think we got a copycat recipe for the strawberry acai refresher yet. For this one, I really wanted to spice things up in this series and I really think I've done it. It's looking like a challenge. For this next copycat recipe, instead of recreating something from a fast food place, this is actually from a bougie, like artisanal, whatever you want to say, kind of bakery. This is something that people travel to go and eat. If you're remotely interested in food or baking, you must have heard about this bakery in New York City called Levine or Levine Bakery. Don't know the name, but it doesn't matter because it's these chocolate chip cookies that you must have seen on your Instagram feed. I'm going to put photos so you recognize what kind of cookies I'm talking about. They have such a specific look to them. If you go on Google, that's probably the most requested chocolate chip cookie in the world. People really want to know what the secret copycat recipe for this is. If you live anywhere else other than New York City, you won't be able to recreate these. This recipe is so popular. It's been sent to me by thousands of people. I'm going to put everything in the description down below. So I've measured every single ingredient for these chocolate chip cookies to the T, and because they have such a specific look, it has to be made to perfection so that it looks exactly like those cookies, like it's a perfect copycat recipe. And I believe in this. You know when I get my mixer out, things are about to get real, like I'm actually invested in this. It kind of starts as like a traditional cookie recipe. So this is one cup of cold butter. My favorite thing about this recipe is that it doesn't actually have that many like crazy ingredients. For example, it doesn't use any vanilla extract, which apparently is like the secret of these popular cookies is the fact that there's no vanilla flavoring in it. It's just a very plain cookie. I think it's mostly about the cake texture of it. So to the butter, we're going to add white sugar and also some brown sugar. I think this is a cup, but you guys will be able to see the ingredients down below because once again, we cannot get in legal trouble. <laughs> Apparently, this is a very important step of this recipe, which is we need to cream this for nine to 10 minutes. That's an insane amount of time for this to mix, but this is gonna make the foundation to our cookies. So I'm not gonna risk it. This is gonna cream for like nine to 10 minutes and then we can move on to the rest of the ingredients. The temptation to add some Vanilla extract right now is very strong. A little dash of cinnamon. We're just gonna let this cream. Wow, I feel like I've just experienced the six cycles of life. Okay, I'm gonna increase it a little bit. This seems ready. Nine minutes seems excessive, but who am I? Like, this is, it is what it is. This is very creamed up, if that's even a word. Like, it's almost like a, a souffle or something. I don't know, it's like a weird duck texture. I'm going to go and assume that this is well mixed. To this, we're gonna add uh, the baking soda and salt. Um, I can't tell you the measurements, guys. You'll be able to find it if you really want to. Apparently, it's really important to add one egg at a time and then combine each one of them individually. I don't know why this is so important, but like I said, baking is basically not asking questions and just following orders, which I'm very good at, so. So I'm assuming it's okay to add the second egg. 
I mean, this is looking right. Martha Stewart is gonna... I was gonna say she's turning in her grave. I don't think she's dead. She's in jail. It's so strangely fluffy. I've never seen a texture like this before. It's honestly so weird. It's literally like cookie dough slime. That is the texture of this. Even though it has all the basic ingredients, this does not look normal. Fanciest kitchen in the world and I don't have a spatula. Okay, I'm going to basically get all these sides mixed in because I always forget about to scrape the sides. That's what all the top comments always are. I just want you guys to see this texture. Isn't that so strange for cookie dough? Like it's so light. It's almost like cake batter, which is, you know, the signature look of the cookies is the fact that they're very much like cake cookies. So this actually does make sense. So this recipe actually uses regular plain flour, but also some cake flour, which I think is gonna give it that softness, that sponginess of a cake. I'm gonna start with a little bit of the cake flour and a little bit of the regular flour as well. We're not supposed to overly mix this, just literally combine it. And as it's going like that, I'm just gonna add the rest. It smells like really good. It smells, I think it's the brown sugar. So I think this is basically it. This is not supposed to basically mix any longer than that. Okay, it feels a lot more like the traditional cookie dough now, but still a little bit bouncier. Bouncier is a good word to describe this. It has like volume and like movement to it. I feel like sometimes you guys need to have the visuals. That's the visuals. I think this is going to be good. When it comes to the chocolate chips, we're using miniature ones and some bigger ones because on the actual copycat recipe, they use smaller and bigger pieces of chocolate. So I basically try to recreate the same thing. So we're using three different types of chocolate chips, dark chocolate and some milk chocolate as well. That's two cups of chocolate chips, which is insane. That's way too much. Like I would never put that much in a cookie recipe. And this is two cups of chopped walnuts. And I feel like the walnuts are such a big important part of the recipe that you can't really skip this. This is what makes it the copycat recipe. So if you have a nut allergy, what a way to go. <laughs> That's not funny. Food allergies are not funny. Let's not make jokes about that. This literally looks so strange. The biggest ingredients in this is chocolate chip cookies and walnuts. That's basically all the ingredients. So now we're just supposed to mix this a little bit. This is so, so strange. I don't make cookies very often, but this definitely is not looking like regular cookie mixture. This cookie recipe actually says, you know what? You have to bake it straight after finishing. So the way it is now, it is the way it's going to go into the ovens. Wow, it smells so, so good. And this is really strange. It's a lumpy brownie mixture. That's what this is. I've got an ice cream scoop and because these cookies are supposed to become so big because they actually rise because they're like cake cookies, we actually can only cook four at a time. So that was mentioned in the recipe as well. I'm going to try to make them similar in size. So this would be one, two, It doesn't look like they're gonna grow that much. I am just doing what it says on the recipe. So this would be three. Hopefully they're not gonna be too, too big. So this is the before. Guys, please take a mental image, take a screenshot. So if it looks bad, at least we came all the way here with the recipe. I think these look incredible. This actually looks like what I would expect that cookie dough to look beforehand. It's so interesting to me with copycat recipes, finding out what's actually behind the visuals. And behind the visuals is basically walnuts. That's what gives it that powdery look to these cookies is it's chopped walnuts. We're gonna bake this for nine to 12 minutes. I'm praying to the gods of baked goods that this is going to come out <laughs> decent. If this doesn't come out good, that's the end of the series right here. You guys better say a good prayer before this goes in. Okay, so. In terms of shape, at least, these look really, really similar. When they started to melt in the oven and they were still quite tall on the very top, I was like, that's exactly what the cookies look like. Like you guys saw the photos as well. I want to taste it, but I also want to cut into it to see if it has a cake texture. That's how we'll know if this is a real copycat recipe. On the recipe basically says that this needs to cool down for 10 minutes at least. Otherwise, this is a no-go. You cannot eat it or cut into it 
for at least 10 minutes. These are about to be the longest 10 minutes of my entire life. But if these look like the other ones, which I honestly think that they feel like cakes, like cookie cakes, cake cakeies? That's a great idea, wow. This is why I am the creative genius that I am. This is why God gave me these creative juices and left everyone else thirsting. 10 minutes and I'm gonna peel them off and I think this is gonna be it. So it's about to hit the 10 minute mark. Wow, the smell, like it literally smells like bakery quality cookies. It worked really, really well. They feel less cake-like now. If these work the way we expect them to work, they're going to be like cake-like on the inside. And when we break into them, when we stack them up, they're going to be super soft. We clearly did not wait the whole time, but I mean, I need to give it at least five more minutes for them to fully cool down. I might put one in the freezer now, but meanwhile, I'm going to enjoy one of the gooey falling apart ones. Oh my God. That tastes like salted caramel. It literally melts in your mouth. This is insane. Wow. Visually, I don't know if you guys can see, but I think that's really similar to those Instagram photos when the texture kind of looks like slightly undercooked cake. I think it looks really similar. It hasn't fully set yet, so I'm not even gonna pretend. And I feel like they could have been a little bit taller. I could have put more dough to make them look real. And I will do that on my second batch. The flavor alone, <gasps> this one looks perfect. Look, this one has the cake-like crumbles kind of texture. This one looks exactly like the photos. This is obviously my opinion. And I definitely think you guys should give this a try and find out for yourself. I'm gonna say this is one of those reliable ones. Not only so many people have said this has been highly reviewed by many people, not just me, but these are probably the best chocolate chip cookies that I've ever made. And that has to account for something. So that's a good outcome because that means we hopefully get an episode four. Give the video a like if you guys would want to see an episode four because I really want to make it. Am I making this copycat series just because I enjoy it? Possibly. Please let me know if you want an episode four. Also, don't forget to subscribe and switch my notifications on before you go. <laughs> And take a cookie. <laughs> Grab a cookie for the way. POV, my friends leaving my house. Please take a cookie. No, honestly, please take it. I literally cannot eat more cookies. <laughs> I literally have a full cheesecake in the freezer. Don't ask questions, guys. Just, I don't have the answers. Are these slightly undercooked? Possibly. Does that make them perfect? Yes. Honestly though, I was joking, but please do let me know whether you want episode four or not, because I don't know if it's time to drop this series and just do something new, or if you guys still want something from it. So I love you guys. I hope you guys had fun and I will see you guys in two or three days. Bye-bye.